will be visible we will start then yes ma'am now it is visible ma'am yeah. okay so as i mentioned the last topic from unit 2 is types and error checking so already we talked about the uh, different types and all that and this particular topic is from the uh, ravi sethi chapter 4 so types and error checking as i mentioned this is the last topic which we are going to discuss and see at the same time if you have checked there is one more point that is the uh, modeling of the data for that already we have discussed that particular concept in the procedure activation so what we will do we will share one ppt uh, of one case study you can just go through that and you will be able to understand because multiple times we have discussed that particular concept okay so the last topic from unit 2 is types and error checking so basically uh, types and error checking so my types are extend from the values to expressions so as i mentioned we have already talked about the different uh, types in the programming languages like character number then integer float slow uh, and so on and these types of the variables are going to be extended to the expression and how it will be done that we are going to see in today's lecture so the type of an expression x plus y can be inferred from the type of x and y variable so basically the type of variable binding is already we discussed about the static binding or early binding dynamic or run time or late binding all those things we have already discussed so by using that particular concept we will see how the types and error checking will be done in the programming languages so the pascal has a static binding of types and dynamic binding of values of a variable meaning is what when we are declaring a variable int x so at static time the what type of that variable that is going to be bind but the actual values of that variable will be bind at run time and whereas the lisp has a dynamic binding for both values and the types so it is totally depend on the programming languages how that variable binding will be done uh, whether it is both the type as well as the value will bind at uh, static uh, at dynamic time for some programming languages the type will bind at a start uh, at early binding or at a compile time whereas the values will be allocated or stored into that variable at run time and already we have discussed about all that things so static versus dynamic binding when the type of an object is determined at compile time it is known as static binding and whereas when the type of the object is determined at run time that is called as a dynamic binding late binding or run time binding so these are the types of the bindings which already we discussed now we will see how this types and error checking will be done at static and dynamic checking so when the checking of these types will be done at static time this is called as a static checking whereas when it will be done at run time it is called as a dynamic checking so see previously that is uh, uh, static and dynamic binding this is static and dynamic checking of that particular type so the type error occurs if an operation is improperly applied programs are checked statically dynamically checking is done during a program execution and a strong typing ensures freedom from the type errors so meaning is what c in some programming languages all of you are now familiar with c programming java programming python programming right so in uh, c programming if you are going to add two numbers so in uh, x plus y so in that case my x is integer y is also integer right so my result is going to be of integer type so over here at static or at compile time when the type of that variable is known to us right at that time it will be done as static checking whereas if you are accepting a value okay so now if you are accepting a value at a run time and if you have entered a wrong value for integer as suppose 5.5 then in that case it will throw an error at run time so that will be a dynamic checking during a program execution now strong typing ensures freedom from type errors meaning is what now all of you uh, are i think familiar with uh, eclipse ide 
Are you familiar with Eclipse ID? Yes. Correct. So whenever you are typing your code, and if you are uh, given one variable as a int, and if you are trying to assign a value as a float, but obvious, it will give you an error, right? And whenever you are making any syntax error, immediately at left hand side it will show you a red cross. Am I right? Have you observed this thing? Yes, ma'am. Correct. So that is my strong typing, which ensures the freedom from the type errors. So immediately, if you are making any mistake, it will let you know at that time only. So in future, there won't be any dynamic errors will be there, or there won't require any dynamic checking. Okay. So that is my strong strong typing. So static and dynamic checking is what the type checking is needed to make. sure the operations are well defined on the objects to which they are being applied as i mentioned x plus y if both are integer integer so whatever be the operations which are allowed for integer it should be properly defined or not that is going to be checked at the uh, that is called as a uh, type checking it means some rules will be there which will check this particular type of things that's why it is a type checking so type checking is needed to make sure whether the operations are well defined on the objects to which they are being applied so there are two types of checking as we mentioned static type checking which is done at compile time dynamic type checking which is done at run time and but obvious it is done whenever an operation is applied to an object and when the operation will be performed during a run time so the type could not determine in advance meaning is what when the operation will be exactly performing this will be done at run time so at static time or at early binding the dynamic type checking won't be possible so these are the some things so static versus dynamic typing now java which is uh, called as a static typing so over here see as i mentioned if i'm declaring a variable as a int and if i'm trying to assign a value as float it won't be allowed because it won't allow you to change the type of that particular variable it has to be of type string in this particular case whereas in case of python or in javascript if you are declaring a variable uh, as integer but if you are overriding it see over here it is overriding the integer type whereas i'm declaring the name as name variable as a character so or a variable name first i will i'm assigning a value as string then after that when it is overwritten the value of 34 it will be of type integer so for that i will give you because i don't know how much you are familiar with javascript but you are familiar with python programming am i right so in python programming if you are using any variable suppose for example answer answer is equal to 10 it will get that type of the variable as a integer but if you are assigning answer is equal to uh, suppose string as sy com it will be of type string so at run time whatever be the data you are assigning to that variable it will be or that object will be treated of that particular type so that is called as dynamic typing programming or the uh, as i mentioned javascript and python is dynamic typing programming now after doing the strong uh, sorry static and dynamic checking static at dynamic typing next is the strong uh, strong versus weak typing so what we mean by a strong typing that is the variables expressions etc have types meaning is initially when you are writing a program each variable each expression you uh, it it is having a specific type for example in your c programming java programming the declarations will be done at the start so all the variables and based on that variables the type of expressions will also be defined so types must match it means whatever be the variables you have declared of that type while performing the expressions it has to be matched with that particular data type so examples are java c++ plus, uh, sorry c hash c and there are many other programming languages now weak typing is what there is no data types is declared for any variable and the variables are just aliases for the memory locations that is nothing but in assembly programming there is 
no data type is assigned to any variable it is just allocating a memory or a byte memory locations or addresses for that variable so the languages like assembly basic are of weak typing so when the strong typing was introduced that is in late 1960s and uh, by the programmers they used to say strong typing is for programmer with a weak minds that is there is no need to keep in mind what type of variable they have used so strong typing is for programmers with a weak minds meaning is a programmer should be able to remember the type of the variables and the memory location himself program won't do that user have to do that so but obviously it will be very uh, heck, uh, what we can say if user is using many uh, variables in the program at that time it will be very difficult to keep in mind the memory locations and all that stuff so this is the disadvantage of the uh, what we can say the uh, type of keeping mind in the strong typing for the programmers now next is types so already we have seen what we mean by the types and different types of the uh, objects and all that in the starting of the unit 2 so type is what it is nothing but a set of values and the associated operations so i will give you quickly a hint so that you will be able to recollect the things so we have seen the basic data types and the constructed or the aggregated data types so basic data types are what number character boolean integer or all these are also called as base types or the built in types so built in types of any programming language at that time we have seen for integer what set of value is associated with that integer how the memory will be allocated so at that time we have discussed six attributes associated with that particular variable so all that comes over here so based on that we there are two types of uh, basic types as i mentioned atomic type with a no internal structure so see meaning is what system will take care there won't be any specific internal structure for this particular types whereas the constructed types they are formed from the basic types with the type constructor so that is if you remember we have seen aggregated or the constructed types as arrays structure pointers functions are also called as a aggregated type there is then compound types like uh, variant records and all that stuff which we have already discussed so that is about the type so my type expression so see first is type that is the uh, type of a variable after that we are going to see what will be the type of an expression so for expression also again it will be of basic type or it will it will be of type name now when we are saying a basic type so basically when we are saying a basic type it will be of any basic or built in data types it may be integer float real uh, character boolean like that whereas a type name or you can define that is like your enum and all that so type this in my int where you are giving a specific name or you are defining a specific structure for that particular language at that time my type expression will be based on type name and the third one is a type constructor applied to the type expressions meaning is all the aggregated uh, or constructed types which we said so arrays array i comma t so which indicate this is a constructor for an array then products t1 product that is this is my multiplication operator so t1 into t2 based on this two the expression will be of that specific type then records pointers and functions so i think all these things we have already discussed what is array how we can use the records pointers procedures functions so see over here if you are going to look at for the functions t1 into t2 at, and whatever be the functions you are having based on the what type of a data type of that function is there based on that that function will be treated of that particular type now we will see the examples also so that it will be more clear now my expressions will be also represented by the trees so can anybody just let me know um are you familiar with such a type of tree representation where we have learned this yes abstract correct we have seen 
abstract syntax tree same way my expressions will be represented by using the trees so when i am writing an expression as character into character so but obvious character into character and the product will be as a pointer integer so at that time this char into char which will produce a pointer which is of type integer so all the expressions will be represented by using the trees same way in pascal we know that how to declare an array so while declaring declaring an array of pointers as a character so array 100 so 100 will be the index or the size of the array then that array is of pointer type and that pointer is of character type so in this way the expressions will be represented by using trees now after seeing what is type how the type expression will be done the next is type systems so the type system is nothing but a collection of the types which we just now discussed plus a collection of rules for assigning a type expression to various parts of a program so this is nothing but a system so my type system as name indicated it is a collection of types plus a collection of rules in order to assign the type of that particular expression so how we can evaluate or how we can decide the what is the type of a particular expression because our program will have a set of instructions which will consist of the expressions and uh, we have seen also the rules okay so in order to decide a type of an expression the type system for each language is there which is a collection of types and the collection rules so ensuring a runtime safety so my type system so what are the advantages of my type system it will ensure a runtime safety that is it detects and avoid a runtime errors so as i mentioned in uh, 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 as i mentioned the strong typing that is at uh, typing time only it uh, your id will let you know there is some error so it will ensure by strong typing the runtime safety so it detects and avoid the runtime errors then improving expressiveness which is nothing but it interfaces with well defined operations that is but obvious if my system is knowing plus operation but obvious it is knowing plus will be applied on integer and what type of values will be associated with that so it interfaces with well defined operations and generating a more efficient translation meaning is what for example integer versus real arithmetic that is whether the operations are uh, uh, performing on one variable as integer and one as float so for example if i am having x plus y and my x will be of integer type and y will be of float so what it will the, uh, what it will do in that case automatically my uh, y will be my x will be converted to the upper case or it will be converted into a float so for example as i mentioned int x float y and if i am performing x plus 1 so in some programming languages it allowed me to perform the operation on uh, data of different data types because over here my x is in whereas my y is float so automatically at run time my x will be converted into float and my result will be assigned which will be of float so this is a run time or due to type system some programming languages allow us to perform the uh, <clears throat> generating more efficient translation translation is what automatically at run time it is doing a translation of x from integer to float so i hope you are able to uh, you have understood Uh, what is type system and uh, how it is beneficial or advantages of the type system that is ensure run time safety improving expressiveness and generating more efficient translation so my type system the type of an expression as i mentioned a type system for a language is a set of rules which is a combination of types and rules the rules of the type system specify proper usage of each operator in the language as i already mentioned in some programming languages when we are saying integer all arithmetic operations relative relative operations are allowed so an expression is either a variable or a constant 
or it is formed by applying on an operator that is all arithmetic and rela uh, relational operators so for example real number should contain decimal point so but obviously when i'm saying real number it should be contain decimal point whereas when i'm saying integer it should not contain the decimal point it will be purely 1 2 3 4 that is 0 to 9 numbers will be there so these rules and all these stuff is there with my type system now from that the language classification so as i already mentioned in some languages the data type won't be required so that language is called as untyped language so untyped languages are assembly lang uh, assembly language whereas strongly typed languages the languages in which every expression can be assigned an unambiguous type that is as i mentioned in c java we have to declare or we have to specify the type of each variable which we are using so statically typed every expression can be typed at a compile time that is your machine language whereas dynamically typed some expressions can only be typed at runtime that is common uh, common programming language is lisp now you can also you are knowing python so python is also a dynamically typed language and weakly typed languages that can be statically or dynamically typed there are some languages which are weakly typed so we have talked about strongly typed languages weakly typed languages and untyped languages so this is or based on that the languages are classified how the variables or the type system is there for the objects in that particular language now type checking already we talked about the a type checker enforce a type rules that is by using a type system it will check whether my programming language is a uh, static uh, whether it is using a static checking dynamic checking whether it is a strong or weak and based on that it performs so when we are saying a static checking already we have discussed it perform at compile time early detection and it is not always possible when you are using aggregated data types whereas dynamic type checking it is performed at run time it is more flexible and it is run time overhead because but obviously at run time what type of data user is entering based on that the remaining things will be manipulated so this is a type checking basic rules already i have told you if x plus y when we are doing how it will be performed now so in order to do this type checking uh, the syntax directed type checking so i think all of you are able to remember the grammar for each language there is a grammar so we can consider this simple language grammar where my program is declarations or we can say definite uh, declarations and the sentences right now my declarations will be declared with d semicolon d that is separated multiple declarations will be there or it can be a id of specific type now when my id colon t so it indicate this t is nothing but of a type character integer boolean that is all the basic data types or it can be of aggregated data type like array or it may be a pointer okay so array of integers uh, then pointer of integers so all this will be given with this t rule and then next is e where expressions can be a literal a number a id or it will it may be an expression as e plus e e minus e or it may be of array e of e or it may be a function e of e or it may be a pointer also now then s which us s will be produced with sentence it may be a sentence or it may be an id or it may be any your control flow statement so this is a grammar and we will check or we will see how this syntax direct the directed tree will be used for type checking so see the declaration what we said program is produced by using defa or declarations and sentences but this declaration is what it is d semicolon d that is you will have multiple declarations like int a int b float a then character c so all these will be separated with this particular rule now my declaration will be id colon t that is id is what a identifier that is a 
colon integer so id or the identifier that is variable name colon t and now see when this will be checked with my system or my language it will how it will be done if you are using a variable for that variable what is the data type so it will be id dot name and the data type now this t this t dot type is what this t is nothing but of which data type associated with that identifier so t will be integer it may be boolean it may be array so all these things with or it is written separately right so the translation scheme that saves the type of an identifier after declaration now we will see for the expression so type checking for the expression how it will be done for expression it is literal number id so how it will be done e it can be a literal if it is a literal it is this literal is having a type character if e is num number will be of integer if your expression is a identifier a so we have seen for id already it is written in the declaration the type of that variable so it will be checked so when it will be checking for that particular variable it is referred as a lookup table so for this expression when it is a id that is suppose you are having x is equal to y so x ka type already declare ki hai declaration me same way with the y and it will check the declaration of y and that will be assigned to your x so in this way the identifier will be referred in the lookup table for that expression same way it will be done for array and the uh, pointers also now so if we are having a expression like e1 plus e2 that is uh, any arithmetic operation like addition subtraction multiplication at that time what it will do it will check for the e1 e1 ka type kya hai at the same time it will check of e2 type so if i am having x plus y it will check the type of x plus type of y and see if both are matching that is and and is what if both are same that data type will be given to your expression e if both are not same at that time it will throw an error type mismatch aapne programming languages mein while doing the programming sometimes you have faced this type mismatch when you are performing the operation on the variables it is giving type mismatch i hope you are able to recollect yes or no okay same way it will be done for the functions that is function name e2 and then it will be given to the expression type when it will be the expression is of function type even dot type that is even which extends to t2 and e2 dot type so whatever be the type of even and e2 and if both are matching then only it will return true otherwise it will throw an error now we will check it out for sentences so see we are going step by step first we have checked the type of a variable that is for identifier once it will be done for the identifier we have checked for the expressions and after expression now it will be are going for the sentences because my sentence can be a uh, expression sentences are going to be separated by semicolons so in that case when it will be simply a uh, expression just now we have seen in a expression type right so if in the lookup table that e type is matching that particular if it is true then it will return void see if my lookup table and my e dot type is matching then it will return the type of a sentence as a void otherwise it will return error so we will see one example so it will be more clear same way when my sentences are separated by semicolon at that time s1 type void same way s2 ka type agar void hai then only it will return the sentence for this grammar rule as void otherwise there will be an error same way for the control flow statement that is if then else while do do while then switch cases because we have seen each programming language is having its own set of rules uh, for the grammar or for each language grammar is written and with that grammar my type system will check the uh, whether the uh, for, it will check for each and every case that is type of variable type of expression type of a uh, sentence and then type of a program also 
so whatever we have discussed based on that i will just give you an example so that it will be more clear whatever we have talked now if i have i colon integer semicolon j colon integer now so for this particular declaration which rule we are going to use from this grammar can anybody just tell me i colon integer semicolon j colon integer so which rule you are going to use from this particular simple language grammar c program declaration semicolon sentences am i right again b will be having a rule d semicolon d so same way over here we can apply that rules for this program i colon integer semicolon j colon integer so my program will be collection of or the rule for program is given as d semicolon s again over here for this particular line i am having declarations which are separated by semicolon so d semicolon d now my d is going to have identify id colon t because this is having variable name which is identifier colon and the type so id colon t rule i am going to use so identifier will be uh, uh, mentioned with a i whereas t will be of type integer same way it will done for d and when it will go for the next statement at that time i is equal to i plus 1 so but obvious for the remaining things it is a collection of sentences so there are two sentences that's why i'm going to use a grammar rule s semicolon s and the remaining thing again for i i <clears throat> equal to expression is there so id colon equal to e this rule i'm using my e expression will be over here e plus e whereas my i will be represented with id and e will be of type number so over here it will check over here the e e is a number so for num the data type is integer so it will return that type integer to this sentence also and when this sentence and this sentence is having the same type as integer it will return as void if over here it will be float and this will be integer it will throw an error for that sentences also so in this way type checking will be done this is an another example of uh, integer and the aggregated data type i colon integer so same way by using that same grammar you have to just draw a tree for that expression checking or the type checking now after that the basic rules for type checking so we have seen the example while doing this type checking how it will be done there are three ways or three rules overloading that is multiple meanings coercion that is implicit type conversion and polymorphism that is parameterized type so you are knowing some we have already uh, used this term, uh, terminology coercion when we are talking about the array and all that stuff whereas i think you are familiar with overloading and polymorphism have you heard these keywords anywhere Over, yes sir. overloading you have seen right so it will be easy then to understand so now when i am saying overloading multiple meanings it means when i am using a plus sign for addition of two integer values at that time it is used both the integer and real addition it is possible uh, it has two possible types that is as i mentioned if it is having x plus y where x is integer y is real in that case my x will be converted internally by my programming language or by my system into float it will perform that operation and the expression will be written that as a real one or the float one now at the same time when i'm saying plus so 4.8 plus is used both integer and for real addition so it has two possible types that is if e has a type in and f has a type in both are integer so my expression will be integer if it is having real expression will be real so again it will be totally depend on the programming language because as i mentioned sometime it will perform the what we can say that i will come to that point afterward first we will see the basic thing that is when i am using plus for the integer 
real uh, or the basic data types it will perform addition but if i'm using uh, uh, what we can say the uh, plus sign for the strings but obvious that plus indicate it is a concatenation right meaning is what the operator is same with a multiple meanings when i am applying with the numbers it will perform addition but when i am applying with the characters it will be concatenation am i right yes or no yes ma'am that is overloading and that you have already used in c++ and java now next is type conversions so see as i mentioned type conversions is what some time my programming language or the type system will take care that if with this example we will see see float sum equal to 0.0 int a is equal to 123 and now when i am adding sum is equal to sum plus a where as my sum is float but my a is integer right so one variable is of integer type and one is of float so what will happen over here so depending on the programming languages because as i mentioned sometimes you are getting type error, mismatch type mismatch error for some languages but whereas for your java programming it will convert this integer into float that is 123.0 sum ki value zero hai and it will perform the addition okay now so when it will be when my system will automatically changing its type from one type to another type that is called as the uh, when it will be system will be done so the type conversions are of two type implicit explicit so type conversion is what changing one type to another one as I, just now i have given an example of int and float so when my system is doing automatically it is called as a implicit conversion that is called as a coercion whereas in some languages you have to explicitly do that that is uh, maybe in uh, um, uh, while doing in python when you are accepting the input at the time you have to explicitly convert it into int if you want to make it that variable as int am i right so at that time that is type casting also you have used the wrapper classes in java where you are explicitly converting one data type into another one so when it will be explicit you are using type casting implicit that is referred as a coercion so these are the two types of the conversion in the uh, uh, when you are using the programs so coercion is what it is limited to the situation where no information is lost in the principle in many languages that is int to real character to int and uh, in that way whereas a casting is what user indicates the conversion some casts are not allowed that is in some programming languages it doesn't allow the cast, uh, casting whereas in java as i mentioned we can use a wrapper classes when we want to do the one data type to another data type see type casting if you remember the basic data type classes which i want to override and i want to convert from one type to another type at that time you have used wrapper classes so that is the type conversion coercion and the uh, that is implicit and explicit when explicit is used it is casting implicit that is coercion so this is the example as i already given you an example of coercion into float so this is one more example now after that the third type checking rule is polymorphic type monomorphic versus polymorphic so for polymorphic it is also referred as universal and ad hoc now when we are saying a ad hoc type of polymorphism or a ad hoc type of polymorph that is overloading and coercion now just now we have seen a coercion and overloading also we have discussed whereas universal is what it is parametric and inclusion type so universal is having again two types parametric inclusion ad hoc is having overloading and coercion and already we have talked about overloading and coercion uh, on the previous slide so basically in a universal so we will talk about the universal type of polymorphic <coughs> polymorphism so in universal polymorphism it is called as a true polymorphism meaning is what unlike ad hoc polymorphism universal poly polymorphism imposes no restrictions on the admissible type the same function logic applies to a potential unlimited range of a different types 
so meaning is what if you have written a, a function like a shape i think all of you are familiar with java programming so uh, can i take one example from the java so it will be easy for you to understand see all of you have might declared a uh, class as a shape in shape you will, you are having a triangle rectangle circle uh, cylinder like that and in order to draw that particular shape whatever be the object you are passing to that draw function automatically it will take that shape so that is the uni universal polymorphism that is true polymorphism whereas ad hoc polymorphism in the programming languages ad hoc ad hoc polymorphism is a kind of a polymorphism in which polymorphic functions can be applied to the arguments of different types meaning is what you are having integer variables at the same time it will be applied on the different type of arguments like float character string like that so that is your ad hoc polymorphism ad hoc polymorphism allows the functions having the same name to act differently for different types that is function name will be same but depending on what parameters you are passing of different type it will behave differently so plus operator adds to integer as i mentioned already plus sign when you are applying on the integer it will add perform addition whereas when i'm applying on the uh, two strings it will concatenate so these are the examples of universal and ad hoc polymorphism then there is a parametric polymorphism it is called as a early binding so my parametric polymorphism opens a way to use the same piece of code for different types and parametric polymorphism allows a function definition that share the identical logic independent of the type so it uh, like uh, you are using a list in python right so when i am using a append function so with append function i can pass a single parameter to append into a string or i can use multi uh, list as an argument where it will append a complete list into a list right so append joins to list can be constructed so that it does not care about what type of element you are adding so my append with the python uh, i am giving the example of a append function with a python because you are familiar so it will be easy so it doesn't matter what type of parameter you are passing it just perform the operation that's it it doesn't matter about the data type just give me a minute girls so append that is poly <coughs> parametric polymorphism inclusion polymorphism it is also called as a subtyping so in inclusion polymorphism it is a ability to use a derived classes through base class pointers and references and it is also known as a runtime polymorphism because the address of a function is not located at compile time so for example when we are using a pointers but obvious c value for the pointer is null so null is a polymorphism which belongs to all the pointer types so when it will be null but obvious all it is of polymorphic polymorphic type so all the pointers will have the same value that is the inclusion polymorphism after that overloading already uh, i have given you an example of the plus sign where the addresses variations in the function signature which you have used overloading that is the function name is same signature is same but the parameters which you are passing may be different whereas coercion polymorphism it is called as a casting like as i have already given you an example when you are converting uh, of uh, int data into a float that is the coercion polymorphism then next is the type equivalence so as name indicate already we are knowing about the structure so two type of structures and the name so when two structures are having the identical data types into it they are called as a structural equivalence so, so two type expressions are structural equivalent if they are of same basic type or they are formed by applying the same constructor so a and b match because they are both boolean in this particular case name equivalence use each type name as a distinct type a and b don't match because they are they don't have the 
uh, or they they are having the different names so name equivalence is what if the names are not same they are not matching but obvious it won't be equivalent whereas type is same so it will be type equivalence same way the expression uh, structural equivalence that is type struct over here as i mentioned the name over here name is same at the same time in between the variables which are declared are different but the both sets are same in this particular case that is here structural equivalence this is another example of the structural equivalence to determine whether the two types are structurally equivalent and recursively it compare the structure of two expression by using so already i explained you how to check the type of an expression so it will recursively compare the expression of that particular structure and based on that it will written the structure of that put or it will test the equivalence of that structure that is if it is true for each and every structure inside this particular for the arrays and pointers it will written true for the boolean uh, equivalence over here otherwise if they are not matching it will written false this is the structural equivalence one more example generally they are structurally equivalent if they contain the same number of fields and corresponding fields in order to declare declarations are equivalent as i shown on this particular slide int j int k int pointer same way int n int m and int pointer so over here two variables of type int one is of pointer so it is equivalent then form name uh, equivalence pure name equivalence and transitive name equivalence pure name equivalence is the type name is equivalent to itself but no constructed type is equal to any other constructed type so it will be purely whatever be the built in data type we can say for that it is a pure equivalence whereas a transitive name equivalence that is just like your transitivity i am declaring type s as an integer i am assigning t to s to t so but obvious my t is of integer so all these are so my u will be of integer type so it is a transitivity same way type expression equivalence two type expressions are equivalent if they are formed by applying same constructor to the equivalence expression so already i told you how to check the type of an expression so if both the expressions are equivalent it is type expression equivalence so this is an example in the pascal for the expression equivalence c1 c2 c3 c4 both are of c1 is of same name c2 r s and t where my t is assigned to s so i am giving i am declaring s with the same type of s so c3 one and one is a sub range of the other so these are some rules for the type equivalence in c this is an example of a structure already which i have explained you with the c programming you can just refer at your end and this is a circular type where it is using a pointer so this progression continues indefinitely and assume p is declared of type link because p colon link it means for p it is declaring as a pointer where cell will be allocated for that particular pointer it is having a next pointer as a link next pointer will again a cell so this is a circular type of link so this is all about the type checking and all the stuff so if you are having any difficulty quickly you can ask otherwise we will stop for a day